Hi everybody, this is Carissa from Inky Fairy Designs back with you this week for another Brutus Monroe project. I'm going to show you the supplies that we're using first. First we were challenged by using the Velveteen Glaze and I chose or I had Midnight and Fresh Kale. I'm going to show you just what this Velveteen Glaze looks like. It's like a texture glaze. Um, it's very creamy and very smooth and it dries to a matte finish which is very unique property for a glaze like this. And I'm going to be using this art stencil here and this Take Flight stamp set. I love the butterfly and just all of the sentiments you can build. Of course I'll be doing my stamping with the Detail Ink in Raven and I do have a palette knife to work with the glaze. So let's go ahead and get started on our project. First I put down the stencil on some glitter paper. I was doing a little experimenting when I started my project. I'm going to give this a good mix and then I'm going to take a very tiny, tiny amount onto my palette brush. Um, you don't need a lot. I suggest working in small areas and um, filling your stencil that way if you want to have a nice, smooth, and um, less kind of bleeding or spreading underneath the stencil. Now you could always use pixie spray if you want to prevent that even more so it sticks completely to your paper. Um, I just uh, wasn't going to take that step today so I just used some purple tape on the edge to kind of hold my stencil in place and then I'm going to clean off my palette brush or palette knife and wipe it off with uh, a baby wipe and I'm going to switch colors. So after I get that palette knife cleaned off I'm going to open up the midnight and you can see that it's a bright kind of primary blue I would say and um, so I'm going to start at the bottom of the stencil and I realized at this point that it wasn't very secure on the bottom it was lifting and I really wanted to hold it down as much as I could so I'm going to add a bit more of the purple tape just along the edges and I believe at the bottom unless I just hold it with my finger in place um, but that just helps to keep it pressed down towards the paper more so yeah I'm just gonna hold it down with my fingers and then I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm going to spread that up this blue and you can see I take very very tiny amounts and I work it into the stencil and I just let it kind of glide across and then I'm going to let those two colors blend into each other now I really do love the way that these colors blended and mixed um, next time I use them I'm probably going to mix them together and make more of a teal blue because I really once I started seeing what it was doing and how it was mixing in the new color that it was creating I was like oh I really like that color and so I yeah next time I use the Velveteen Glaze I'm going to definitely try mixing them and see how that works so I just created a nice smooth I think I'm going to go over it one more time with my knife my palette knife and maybe not I'm going to go ahead and just remove the stencil. So this is on the Brutus Monroe glitter paper and you can see that I got a pretty good impression. It wasn't um, too much seepage. Now I ended up, I, there was so much product on the uh, stencil that I wanted to use it. I didn't want it to go to waste. And so I placed it upside down onto um, some of the lunch bag cardstock that's already folded into an A2 size card. So um, and I'm going to press a paper towel over it to kind of press it down and get that impression, almost like printing. Um, I really love the print that actually does come off on the paper towel. That looked pretty cool. Almost decided to use that. But then when I lifted this up, I really liked it. Um, it looks kind of grungy and um, abstract and so I end up using that for the project today instead of the one that I did on the glitter paper. Now I saved that one. I'll probably use it in a future project 
um, because waste not whatnot. And um, but they just definitely gave two different looks here. And you can see it's shiny while wet, but as it dries, it does dry to a matte finish. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish building my card. So I'm going to stamp this butterfly, which I absolutely love. And I really wanted the glaze, the velveteen glaze um, kind of focal point in the background on the paper to be uh, stand out. So I didn't do any coloring today. I felt like this stamp has so much beautiful detail that you don't really need to color it. And um, to show some of you out there who might be intimidated by coloring or think, oh, I don't want to color or I have, I don't know how to, um, I don't have the time. This is just another way to use these beautiful detail stamps and show you that you don't always have to color them. Um, because of the detail, it looks just stunning on its own, and I feel like it really adds a pop of contrast to our lunch bag um, card base. So I just kept it on the white cardstock, which is the Not Your Mama cardstock. <laughs> and I got a little messy, of course, and I got my fingerprint on the cardstock, but I wasn't worried about it because I plan on fussy cutting that butterfly out anyway. So now I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, um, and I'm using this little sentiments, enjoy your birthday, that come in that um, little stamp set. All of the supplies will always be listed below in the description box, so if you are interested in any of them, um, definitely go ahead and check it out there. Um, so I do stamp it a couple of times, I'm still waiting on my, my detail raven re-anchor to arrive, so I do end up stamping everything about three times just because my ink pad is getting a bit dry. But that's what happens when you use it all the time. Um, so once I'm done with that I can go ahead and I'll start, I'll fussy cut the butterfly off camera because that's just, nobody needs to watch me cutting paper. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now I've got a nice good impression here. I'm happy with that. It's nice and black. So once I cut out the, oh, I wanted to show you, I use the um, squeaky clean cleaner, right? That's what it's called. <laughs> um, it smells so good and it cleans the stamp really well. I just spray it on my uh, stamp positioner and then I take my microfiber cloth and just wipe it off. And then my stamp is nice and clean and I don't get any ink all over my fingers. So there I've cut out, I've fussy cut the butterfly, I've cut down the sentiment to just a strip slightly smaller than the card base and I'm going to set it off to the right hand side um, so that kind of hangs just a tad over that um, print. After looking at the card, I decided that I want to add some foam adhesive to the back of the butterfly just to give it a little bit of dimension, and so that's what I'm going to do. Once I've done that, I'm going to place that sort of in the middle of that print, and then the card is done, so that is super simple, super quick. I kept all of this in real time. Oh, one last finishing detail is just adding some glitter on the wings uh, with a glitter pen. Like I said, no coloring, but a little sparkle never hurts. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that more people can see that Brutus Monroe now has a YouTube channel filled with amazing projects by the Inspiration team. Share it on your social media uh, platforms and um, do that with all the videos that we release every week. Uh, if you are inspired by this video or any of the videos that you see on this channel, definitely tag Brutus Monroe and you can tag me at Inky Fairy Designs anytime you create something inspired by something that I have shared here. I love to see what you're creating and come around and say hi. So thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.